Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel where I hope I can help you with your photorealistic texturing project. Today I want to show you how to create any supporting maps quickly using a non-destructive texture setup. After reading the comments, I realized that a few people are a little confused about how to go from this finished diffuse map to create all the supporting maps, such as bump and roughness. It's actually incredibly easy if your setup is non-destructive like mine. Non-destructive workflow gives you great flexibility and speed. So why is it important to be flexible? In production, we are constantly shooting at a moving target. Things can change any time. At the end of the day, filmmaking is a creative process. The director can change his or her mind any time. The supervisors can change their minds about what they want to show the directors as well. Sometimes the revisions are not just about making things look better, it's also about testing out different ideas. Remember I was texturing a decoration on set. It started with terracotta and ended up being black marble. But because my scene was completely non-destructive, the change was finished in a couple hours. So why is it important to be fast? Unfortunately, the deadlines are also moving targets. It is so hard to estimate how long something should take when any changes can happen anytime with a fixed budget. If the director changes his or her mind on a couple times, suddenly you have half the budget you thought you did to finish the asset. Understanding that, I always aim to finish my first draft of the texturing using 50% to 80% of the time I was given, just in case something can happen. First, I want to show you what does a non-destructive setup look like. We start with procedural always. I always start with a procedural tileable map first for every element on the subject. A procedural map that aims to capture as much characteristics of the material as possible. The reason for that is how easy it is to change it. If suddenly the supervisors change their minds about what this material should be, you simply need to swap out the procedurals, which takes two seconds. The second rule for a non-destructive workflow is the distribution of the material is always driven by a mask. We create masks to have control over every element in our assets. Like I shown in my full process video, I build a material, then build a mask for that material. This way I can change everything about that material without affecting anything else. Even when you are just projecting the photo to use as diffuse, you still have to create the mask after the projection, especially for hero assets. Either extract the mask from the photo or use the photo as a guide and recreate the mask, like I showed in my photorealistic texture full process video. Someone was asking me how to create a supporting map from projected diffuse map. The answer is you can't, if you didn't create masks to separate the elements. Mask equals control, and to create high quality texture means everything is intentional and tells a story. You need the control to do so. There is also a production reason for having masks for everything. LookDev will ask for masks so they have more control on their end as well. The more important the asset, the more masks they will need. You should also consider using black and white procedural textures to build your mask first. Build a mask using procedural textures as much as possible will give you even more control and flexibility, which means the characteristics of the material can change any time if need be then hand paint to make him more unique and artistic. Now I will demonstrate what I'm talking about using the last project I was working on. Here's the finished diffuse map from the last video. And I just created a roughness map. I'm creating a backdrop for organization. Now I'm creating the first layer of texture, just like in Diffuse, and I'm going to name it Base Metal. For the texture, I'm just going to duplicate what I have on my Diffuse, so they have exactly the same setting.
Moving on and building the rust layer on top of the metal. The process is exactly the same. I'm just going to duplicate what I had on the diffuse and move it over. Now we see the rust texture. Remember all those masks that we created when we were making the diffuse map? And now they're going to come in very handy as well when we make our supporting map. I will create another radio node and a connect to the transmitter that is connected to the rust mask. Also, since this is roughness, everything should be black and white. So I will plug a luminance node on top of everything. Moving on, the next layer on top of that should be the paint layer. On the diffuse map, we actually have three different kinds of paint layer to create that complicated grunge look. But if you look at the reference, uh, roughness-wise, they are basically all the same. So we don't need the same kind of setup. All we need is just one paint layer duplicated over. I'm also deleting the adjustment layer that I duplicated over because we will need um, new adjustments after everything is laid out. I will do the same thing here, connect the correct radio node to the correct transmitter for this material. The roughness map is starting to take shape. Our last layer of material is the rust on top of the paint. Going to do the same thing here, just going to duplicate the texture and create another radio node that's connected to the right mask. Now we have all the materials we need on this roughness map. The next step is to adjust the value for each material. I'm not doing any rendering here, so I'm just going to estimate what kind of value I will need uh, based on the reference which in film production we do it all the time because the texture artist row and the look dev artist row is completely separate. Once the look dev artist got your texture, they will have to do their magic to match the reference. I think this is where it's really important for texture artists to know how to look dev because you actually have to create proper maps without rendering and that requires experience. We have all the material. I'm isolating each one of them to deal with them separately. I'm going to use HSV adjustment layers to adjust the value. I'm just guessing here, but since the entire object is very diffused, um, there's not much spec going on. So everything is going to be um, pretty bright. But I will make the rust slightly brighter, just so we can see. Moving on to the paint layer, in reality, it's probably brighter as well, but I'm just going to keep it sort of gray so we can see the difference. And the last one is the rust layer, which should look pretty similar to the other rust layer. And now we have this entire finished roughness mask. You can always go back to each material and make them more interesting. Normally, it's going to be after you start rendering, then you will really be able to tell what kind of extra paint you need to put on it. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the bump map. I'm creating a backdrop for organization. I'm going to speed up this part a little bit just because the process is exactly the same. Um, the only difference is by the end, what kind of value you're going to have to give it is going to be different because this one is for bump. After plugging the last mask, we will start to adjust the value for each material. 
The process is the same, just putting an HSV adjustment layer um, in front of each material and uh, adjust the value. I set the basic bare metal to be about 50% gray and everything on top should be brighter than that. There's a little tip when you adjust um, black and white mask is to keep the Mari background 50% gray. So you're always aware where that is. With the rest of the material, because the diffuse itself is pretty dark, I'm gonna use the invert note first to make it bright instead of crank up HSV because I realized that even if I crank up to the very top, uh, it still doesn't give me the brightness that I need. That's it, now we finished our bump map as well. I hope you guys can tell by having mask created for everything while we're working on our diffuse map, how easy it is to create everything else. I hope this video is helpful for you and answer some of your questions about exactly how to create supporting maps. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. I also started a Facebook group. I have been getting many questions lately and I feel like it would be more efficient and helpful to have all the questions and answers in one place. A place where we all learn from each other and get better. I really appreciate everyone who joined so far and I will try my best to help you with your art and career goals. I will leave the link down below if you would like to join as well. That is everything for today and I will see you in the next one.